Hello and welcome to the Penno channel. We're here after that embarrassing performance from Aston Villa. Uh, Aston Villa nil, Spurs four. Spurs battered Villa today. Uh, resounding victory for them. Um, we were there. I'm John Bomber, bro. It was one of those days, man. Um, yeah, we'll get into this one. And bro, how are you feeling right now? Yeah, about as good as you can be after like one of them games. But yeah, I'm looking forward to getting into the podcast anyway. Like we talk about Villa when we win, lose or draw. So yeah, yeah still we'll chat. We'll channel. chat. Yeah, again, um, as you usually say, if you could like the stream, if you. are New around here, please sub to the channel and also drop your comments and thoughts on the game, the performance, everything that went on in the game and what we discussed within the pod. Or drop comments throughout if you're watching live, let us know your thoughts. Right then, bro, we'll get into this one. Um, we both saw the lineup together and we're surprised that we'd gone into to play a five. Emery went with a five. Um, yeah, let me know your initial thoughts. What were you thinking about the initial lineup, man? Yeah, I'll be honest. The last time I um, slandered an Emery lineup, we went and battered Manchester City. So when I did see the lineup, even though I wasn't the happiest, I thought, okay, let me just see it play out. Emery's clearly got a game plan. Let me just see how it goes. But um, even with the lineup, I still expected Cash to be a right mid and probably play higher up the pitch. Um, but if you look at our average positions today, Dinho was the one that was more of like the left mid and Cash was more of a right back in that sense. So. Um, yeah, yeah, it was a it was a back five, but at average positions as well, it kind of looked like a standard four with Dinho pushing up in left mid. Uh, I don't know what what did you think of the, the lineup? Because I think you was a little bit reserved as well. Yeah, I was reserved in the fact that I know last time we played Spurs, we played Cash at the right, on the right further forward of Conza as well. That was the same thing we did. The only difference was Carlos was at the back instead of uh, Lengle. So I thought it was going to be something similar to that. Obviously, no Jacob Ramsey today as well. Um, I think Emery just was a bit worried regarding that and us going forward on that left-hand side and covering as well. I do remember against Spurs, Kulisewski was getting a lot of joy at, um, at their ground against Cash and Konza on that side. So, yeah, for him to go to to change the formation is a massive call for the game. Maybe Emery thought, you know, no Ramsey. Obviously, we've got no Kamara, so Miggins operating in the middle. And with no Ramsey as well, he thought this was the best way to approach Spurs. But that's obviously what he thought, and he thought um, we'd just be able to nullify their attack going that way. Now, whether that's the right approach or not, who am I? I'm not in IM, you know, he's a great manager, who am I? But yeah, um, it, was, it, was, it was surprising to see he went for something different. But yeah, uh, again, how did you feel? Did you feel like it was, you know, could you see what Emery had done and why he'd gone for that? Yeah, he was protecting the width. He wanted to protect the width of the pit, pitch while also remaining compact in the middle. Um, I remember turning to you during the first half and just they could not get any joy through the middle. We blocked off every yeah. single space. They were happy. Emery was happy for um, them to play to Poro or Udogi out wide because they didn't really have options either. I mean, if we look at it on face value, that first half, Emery's game plan in terms of what he wanted to do, which in my opinion was restrict their chances, and then hope for Bailey and um, Watkins to get some get some joy on transition. We conceded 0.03 xG. Yeah. I was the game plan went perfect first half. If that was what he defensively, one hundred percent defensively attack attacking wise, you can argue okay we didn't create we didn't create anything either really. We had point point four, but defensively we nullified Spurs mm, in the first absolutely. Half. So from that perspective, okay, cool. Yeah, so when we oh, when man, we just, saw it get to the, the pitch, half was different than yeah, we'll, it, yeah, we'll get to that, bro. We'll get to that. But yeah, yeah no, as we no, said, no. when when the first half, um, you did see you saw the five three two, and you saw Tillemans come inside, and as you you were saying, bro, bang on, Dinho was getting high up the pitch, but yeah, it was so compact in the middle. Obviously, Spurs looked to bring in a Dogi as well and Pedro Porro through the middle as well. So there was there was no space in the middle of the pitch, and and it was working to our favour. Spurs didn't really get create anything through that. Um, their only shot was Madison. It was from the edge of the corner of the box. There was nothing there. But ourselves, we had a few moments on transition. Obviously, the big one, Ollie Watkins, he was called offside in the end, but he passed the ball when he was virtually one-on-one -on -one with Vicario. Uh, Leon Bailey, there was shouts for a penalty, but I don't think it was. Uh, Basuma got the ball. Clean challenge. 
Luca Digne had the header as well, looping header from the McGinn cross that just went over as well. And I think Matty Cash had a chance at the back post as well, which you couldn't really see from where we were, but it looked like he, he just missed it and kind of struggled to get it back on target. So overall, it, it, you know, the first half, it, it was bitty, it was cagey, but if that was the Unai Emery game plan as to restrict Spurs and how they played, it, it did work. Um, it did work in that case. But yeah, it was it was um, a strange one to see from the start. Uh, we'll get in a few comments, bro, before we carry on, because uh, there's a few in here. Gary H says, thanks for joining. Gary says, hi, guys. I'd take that result as bad as it was if we beat Ajax on Thursday. I'm expecting a John McGinn masterclass on Thursday. I can't lie. Um, you better fix Deontay that, says, you hey, everyone, the only positive is that Villa are still in the top four. Facts, we are still in there and there's still every chance. Uh, Gary H says, Cash is not a wing back and Emmy must know that by now. Yeah, it was it was a strange. He went differently. Um, I'm going to ask you something in a minute, bro. Riding that. Uh, Paul said that was dire. Bad tactics, bad performance. Uh, second half, especially. I agree with the performance. Uh, Deanta says, I think this was also the first time Villa had been kept goalless at Villa Park under Unai Emery. That's a big statement. I thought Van der Ven was ridiculous today so far. He had a great game, for sure. And even Romero bits as well. Um, Gary says, are we... Ter- turning into bottle jobs against these sort of teams concerning. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as bottle, bottle jobs, but um, we'll get into it and what McGinn said as well. Uh, it was a massive game. The players knew it was a massive game and to put in that performance, it's not good. Uh, Kevin Jeans, thanks for joining Kevin. He says, strange lineup for memory, cashing in the no man's land, which moved Bailey inside a ridiculous overthinking by Unai. I can agree with that. And Weston says, you can't even try and see any good things about that today. Quite the pathetic performance, especially that was riding on it. It's a fact. So, yeah, first thing, bro, um, big obviously, some McGinn, big comments there, yeah, there are some big statements big for sure. Yeah. And Everyone's passionate. Everyone's passionate about Villa. Of course. I mean, when your captain comes out and builds it as the biggest game in the club's history in recent times, that that's what it was billed as from, from the captain. So... This, the squad knew the uh, magnitude of the game for sure. Um, and for McGinn to come out and say that is a, it is a big deal. It's a big statement. So, firstly, do you think Emery Unai's over tinkered with the lineup? Do you, th- do you have that perspective or do you think, you know, no Kamara, no Ramsey within the side? He's probably tried to make best of what he has, even though it's meant that Leon Bailey's gone back to playing up front. Yuri Tillemans has come into the three. And we're operating with two wing backs. Yeah, I just feel, in my opinion, um, I try and put myself in Emery's shoes. And what I think he's done is he's watched the reverse fixture. And I spoke about it on the previous podcast. Control wise, Spurs were getting into our half a lot in that game at White Hart Lane. They were getting into our box too easily. And we did not have defensive control over the game. It was more them messing up the final um, third play rather than us protecting the space. Today, I think he, consciously he he did not want to give up that space. He wanted to protect the width and not allow them in behind like that. And he wanted to block the middle as well. Um, my problem with the setup today is if you're going to do that, we need more impetus attacking wise. We need better ideas attacking wise, not just a long ball to Ali or just a long ball to Bailey because they were isolated today, man. As bad as both of them were today. Isolated. Tillemans can't really get up the pitch as quick. Dinia's not the type of guy that can bomb up as well. So even in that sense, you could argue maybe play Moreno over Dinia. If you're going to go to the back five, at least have a fullback that can get out a lot quicker than uh, Luca Dean. Um, I know Luca Dean is good. Well, probably better than Moreno. I was going to say, I was going to that and say, I like, think, the I, count, think balance, count. Well, I think, think balance wise, though, I think balance wise, if you're playing a five back, Moreno's not as much as a as a threat if he if he's not as good defensively. Do you know what I mean? Like we're still kind of protected if we've got more defenders at the back. So I think that that this is another thing as well. And I weren't surprised to see Moreno come on uh, second half in like the 50, fifth minute. Um, I just wanted more from us attacking wise. We couldn't retain the ball. Like you can't beat Spurs if you're not keeping the ball higher up. Um, we had some nice little one v one moments. I'll call them where better decision making. We probably could have got a bigger chance off. But yeah, I wanted to see a lot more attacking wise, but genuinely. Uh, what did you think of Tillerman's role today? Yeah, I'm just going to say, well, in the attacking wise, within the instance, as I've said, we had, you know, the chances we did have. We had Tillerman's had a shot with his left foot. Bailey had a chance. Cash had that one that went wide. Uh, Watkins didn't had you, a fast break. Didn't you have a header? That was a good, 
that was yeah, well worked. That when, yeah, yeah, that was well worked moved as well. And I've cash had another shot. I've come back to look that Dinya one. He's he, he can't even head the ball. He's his shoulder. His shoulder he can't yeah. even head the ball. To be fair, he, last week he, he he got the winning goal. But yeah, he's gone to head the ball. And he's just hit his shoulder in it. So, but yeah, but in terms I'm of, okay. I just want yeah. I just want more I just want more planning attacking in pos- if you're going to give up the possession which you did there's 69 percent in the first half I but don't you think bit- don't, do you think we got into good scenarios in that in that first half where we were had, had a transition like three and four and it was more the decision making the players that was kind of messing it up not the plan itself not enough for me bro just not enough not enough for me i think i, I don't know i think the, la- I think the lack of transition as well kind of does play into the decision making as well because our players were hardly touching the ball that's what it felt like we was in our shape for most of the game. And I just think to myself, mm. we've played we've played with more courage against better sides than Spurs this season. Would you agree? We played with more courage against yeah. Arsenal in the first half. And we played with more courage against City. But as so, I stated, there's, there's, there was no Kamara in that. That's like that's a pivotal player for us and how we yeah, play. That's a good point. There's no there was point. no Jake Jacob Ramsey, okay, he wasn't playing then, but you know, Tillemans, Kamara is a massive player with how we play defensively, and it allows McGinn to operate further forward from that when he's not there. So maybe he took that into regard for this game, and especially that's, now there was no Jacob Ramsey yeah, that's today a good as well. Point. But even still, I think the balance, the balance, he's, he's too cowardly for me, too cowardly, mm-hmm. bro, too cowardly, honestly. And I think the second half just 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 played out, played out in that way. Um, because Spurs, uh, Spurs were getting Spurs like getting in behind, and their decision making improved. Like I remember, first half, Son was finding like a good space, but like his pass was off, and um, he, they were just weren't making the right decisions. But when they got in behind, like I'll just touch on their first goal for like Sars made the oh, one. We'll, go, we'll get to get to some comments first before we go into the second half of touching that. But yeah, Gary says I'm not blaming John at all. He was frustrated and was a one was man of the match until then. Uh, Paul said, our season is riding on Thursday night. If we get stuff, we're finished and hoping for six, to be honest. But a, but a big win and good game. We may reset and charge on to our last 10 league games to win. I mean, it's not all over just yet, not f- for sure. I mean, it's a bad result, but the, the team's proven to come back and get results after the performances. So still positive, still positive here. Uh, Paul says Tillemans was weak and Cash was weak. Uh, Gary says, still one transfer window away from the enemy team for me. Maybe a Williams and a better right back for me. Fair. A person Martin as weak as well. Uh, Deontay says, both Villa and Spurs still have to play the top three. Uh, Spurs play them back to back in April. Man City home, Arsenal home, Liverpool away. They also have their rearranged game against Chelsea. Yeah, it's still all to play for, for sure. Michael's joined us, says, good, good evening all. Thanks for joining, Michael. Uh, Deontay says, still all to play for for both teams. It will go down to the wire for sure. Paul says we looked slow, we seemed weak, no power, no real direction. It seemed like we were tired, tired, tried something new out on a massive game. Uh, Kevin says it ain't over, guys. Still two points clear, 10 games left. Keep the fake facts. Uh, Gary says spread up 70% possession against us. The long ball stuff to Watkins never worked. When Emery gets it wrong, he gets it really wrong. And Michael says uh, plan went out the window today. But as I keep saying, this is a marathon and I still believe which is fair enough. Yeah, so, bro, we get into the second half. Um, yeah, we always say this. It's, 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 a, it's a recurring theme with Villa. Um, we've said it for a while now. Um, first 15 minutes of the second half, uh, we've conceded, I think, the most goals out of any side in the league in the first, between 45 and 60 minutes. Um, it happened again yeah, today. Made, what, what, why made, is this happening? What's going I've on? I've made, I've made a note of the games, isn't it? I want to go mm. through. Is, is that cool? I just want to go through uh, the game. Go through, bro. You you go through, bro. Because this is this is at first I thought it was just coincidence, but it seems like this is now a theme in Villa season. So um, going to the um, first game, first game of the season, first game of the season. Alexander Isak, fifty eighth minute. Burnley, Lyle Foster, forty seventh minute. Liverpool scored in that um that that moment after the break in that game. Uh Arson Edward, Palace at home, 47th minute. Wolves away. Um Huang, 53rd minute. West Ham at home, Jared Bowen, 56th minute. <laughs> like, bro, mm. Forest, um, the own goal that came off Martinez. That was in Mangala, 47th minute. 
Bournemouth, Solanke, 47th minute. I don't know what it is, bro. I don't know. I genuinely don't know what it is. Newcastle, Moreno own goal. Um, that came in like the 52nd minute. Uh, Forest at home this season. Uh, Morgan Gibbs White, 47th minute. Allen today, bro. Today. They scored. It's this 15 yeah. minute period after the second half. Now, I don't know whether it's what's been saying, said um, in the dressing room. Even if it's like yeah. injuries that's happening on the pitch, that's affecting the players as well. But it's this period and it's been a theme all season and we haven't addressed it and it's just frustrating. I do wonder it what it was. I've seen some good points. I was just scrolling online on socials and some good points maybe. The information that Emery's getting over the cross to him at half-time may be overwhelming him at some point. You know, he might be really going in-depth tactically and they might be concentrating on that and it's... They have a lack of concentration due to that. I, I don't know what it is. I, I honestly don't know what it is, but it, it has, it's been a recurring feature for us. And again, today, it felt like what it felt like watching was again, the, the second half started okay. And then Van der Ven obviously got the injury from, from us putting pressure on them. We were in the ascendancy in that half. And Van der Ven's got the injury. And we just switched up from that time. We just switched off from that point. They literally, I think they scored a minute later, if not, yeah. if not less time. Yeah, a minute later. And it's like, how has that happened? Because that's a big player for them. He was outstanding today for Spurs. He's gone off. And you think then that, nah, okay, now we can put even more pressure. New centre backs come on. You know, it's, it's changed up their back four now, which have been solid. And in, in the other end, it's just gone the other way and they've scored. Just a lack of concentration. Yeah, it's. Um, it's strange. It is a strange feature for us that we concede so many goals between the 40, 45 and 60th minute. Because um, me and you used to speak about it and we used to think it was coincidence, but... Yeah, just coincidence. I don't know, to me, yeah, it, looks yeah. like, it, looks like, it looks like there's a theme. There's a theme there, honestly. Honestly, man, because... 11 games. 11 games, and then you got to take out all the games. So we've played, what, 28 games this season. We haven't conceded in all of those games, so that number reduces as well. And then 11 games in the league we've conceded in this period. Yeah. Frustrating, bro. It is frustrating. Well, yeah, the goal itself, do you want to talk to us, bro? What, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, there was a few deflections before um, they get the ball, but it arrives in our half. Um, it's a lovely one-two play. I think Dean loses the ball. Um, it gets past them. And then the ball's played through. And one thing that me and you noticed that the high line in the first half, I thought was really good. I thought it was really good. But at times, I do worry, if we're changing our defensive personnel so much, is it harder for the players to understand the rhythm of the high line and how to how to know what players they're playing with? Because Dean, what was it today? Dean, uh, Pau Torres, Lengley, Kanza, Cash, all trying to keep a high line. Yeah, it was a five. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes I just five sometimes five. I think it might be hard. Yeah, if it's not the same back four every single week and you can't build that trust and rhythm, players coming back from injury as well. That's but, yeah. that's the tough thing we've had this season. We haven't been able to build rhythm. The back four. obviously players just been in and out. We haven't had to settle back four all season. So yeah, I, I hear that as well, bro, for sure. But, yeah, they've um, yeah, absolutely yeah, caught cool. us. Sar gets and honestly, shout out to Sar. We were linked with Pape Matasar two, three years ago. Um it didn't happen, but he's always been a decent player. And this is one of the best passes I think I've seen at Villa Park this season, one half. Like, the ball for Madison is perfect because he has to get it in between Martinez, make sure it's not too close to him, and between Konza as well, because Konza's in front of Madison and he actually had a yard on him at first. Mm -hmm. So it's an unreal ball. What can you do? And of course, Madison scores after, yeah, after um, the, the initial the gripe in the first half. Yeah. yeah. And then Spurs uh, goal. Spurs have got the lead. And we know with Emery Ball, that first goal in the game is so important to how we play. Yeah. Yeah, it's pivotal for us for sure. And we I think when we've taken the lead, we've only dropped what three points a season. And when we've gone behind, I can't I can't remember too many games to come back. Obviously, yeah. Crystal I think Palace. It's just, I think um, it's just Palace, isn't it? Yeah, so it's it's tough ass from that point forward, but yeah, they've they've absolutely caught us in on their transition and they've created space. The, the delivery is ridiculous; it's a great ball because it doesn't even allow for Martinez to come out. And Madison's made the running between both our centre backs, and he's managed to get on the ball. So yeah, the, the it's a great delivery for sure. Now we go one nil down, and it's okay. One nil down. Let's set, let's set and recuperate for us to then concede. What? How many? How many minutes later was it? Two minutes. 
two minutes. And it's again, it's it's an unforced error on our part, isn't it? It's it's poor. It's a poor pass from Kanza, really. I know Tillemans wasn't really on his toes for it, but it's, it's, it is a poor pass across. And Kulazewski's nabbed in. And we're at sixes and sevens, he's got Son as an option. He's got Brennan Johnson as well. The ball, I think, Son um, plays it through to Brennan Johnson. He puts it in the roof. And Martinez has no chance for either of those two goals whatsoever. Um, I, think you get, I think he gets a touch on it, to be fair. Yeah, so but he, 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 he's just poor. Poor play from what's on the ball again. And just a lapse in concentration once again. When, okay, 1-0, let's recuperate, let's readjust. And... Spurs just couldn't play through their press, which sometimes we did struggle in the first half to do. Um, they were sharp on that, but second half they really stepped it up with regarding that press. Yeah, yeah. Any and then Emery, this is probably one criticism. Any, any thoughts on the second one? Oh yeah, Kanza, you can't honestly Kanza. I do love Kanza, but since he's come back, he's been at fault for a lot of our goals. Um, I think he was. You could argue he's at fault for both of the Luton goals defensively or oh, played a major role in it. And then today, today, man, like you see Konza, you see Konza on the ball. Konza should know Tillemans about to be pressed. Like this is what Spurs do. Like they, they, they're setting a trap and you've played it to Tillemans. It's not the greatest pass. And they've snatched it off Tillemans. And it's great decision making from Son. But we, we're open. We're open on transition mm-hmm. and they've, they've punished us. They've punished us. And 2-0, you're thinking, okay, yeah. When do we come from, like, two goals down? Yeah, it's, it's that, tough. That, that it's don't a, tough a few more comments. Well, Kevin says, uh, back four, Cash, Conza, Torres, Moreno should have been the defence, especially at home. Yeah, I can see I can see that. I can see that for sure. Jan Lee, thanks for joining, Leon. He says, oh, as a Spurs fan, you felt like Villa could have got a goal in the first half from the counter. We were so vulnerable. But after the first goal, Villa just seemed to lose focus. Yeah, that, that's how I saw the game, to be honest, especially that first half as well. That's a great, that's a good, summed it up, isn't it, pretty much? Yeah. Deontay says, uh, Villa having an amazing season and punching well above their weight to be competing amongst the top four teams for most of the season. It's an incredible achievement. We're doing extremely well, for sure. And again, it's one game. It's just one game. That's all we have to remember. We're still fourth. They've got a game in hand, of course, but you know, there's, there's still a long way to go in this season. Another big game comes along on Thursday. Uh, Marcus says, as someone has already said, we are still building. I know this is no comfort to anyone at this moment, but I'm trying to stay positive. And you always do, Marco, for sure, when you're in here. So appreciate that. Gary Hayes says, look, Spurs were better and I wouldn't bitch about them getting fourth. We are certain to get Europa, so let's prioritise Conference League now. Still all to play for, Gary. It's still all to play for. Just one bad result doesn't change that, I don't think. I don't. Th- yeah, and I don't think Spurs have been better than us this season. No, 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 do I? I don't think they've been better than us this season. I don't. I don't really. Statistically, I don't think that at all. yeah, I mean, even on the underline well, like, absolutely, yeah, they absolutely. Both teams have had injuries. Both teams, well, teams have had their injuries as well. To be fair, but yeah. Mm. Still all to play for, man. Andy joined us. Thanks for joining. Andy says, evening all. Effing pissed off. Yeah, I think a lot of the majority of Villa fans are, to be honest. Um, yeah, he's one of those today. Uh, Spurs with the better side. Jan Lee says, when we had Conte, it was a 3-4-3, but changed to 5-4-1 and was hard to play out. Emery has been having trouble as well as a 3-5-2 became a 5-3-2. Yeah, it did. Our shape was totally different to anything we've played um, prior to this game, to be honest. And... I, I would be so interested to hear Emery's reasons and, and why he thought and decided to do that. It, it'd just be a really great listen to hear what, he, what his thoughts were and why he went that way for this one. Uh, Dave Bryce has joined us. Thanks for joining. Dave says, to be fair, it might be the cup that would uh, compromise our league for facts that can have an, an effect. Um, did you feel we looked tired today, bro? Um, obviously, he played a, a tough 90 minutes against Ajax and a, lot, a number of first-team players did start that game. Um, did you feel... A lot of them look lethargic, especially in Ollie Watkins, maybe Yuri Tillemans as well. What, what were your thoughts regarding that? Watkins, Watkins, I want to know. I'd love to hear him say, probably won't, but how much that first injury impacted him with his knee. Because he was down for a while. I know the physio didn't come on. Mm, mm. But there was one chance in the first half where he dragged it onto his left foot and this was the same position he scored against Arsenal in the um, 4-2 last, last season against mm. Saliba. But he cut inside. Like, yeah, he Ali hasn't been like that recently in form. Like, he'd just get the shot off. So, I just wonder, mm-hmm. that injury, was it hampering him? Um, his hold-up play looked way off. I don't want to give... I'd like, like to give him the benefit of the doubt because he's been so good this season. It's been amazing. But he was yeah. not he was not good today. 
So he wasn't he wasn't I'm the only Watkins or Leon Bailey and this season yeah. and obviously that's part of how Spurs defended for sure. But they were uh, their touches were just off it today. I had yeah, I yeah. don't know. I think if Bailey if Bailey started versus Ajax, that will probably have more credibility. That of course. of Bailey being of tired. Course. I think it was more just tactically and him being out of position because he reminded me of when he was played as like a um, narrow. He's like a narrow player in the Gerrard Christmas tree formation. Yeah, he just doesn't like. He needs to be wide. He needs to be wide. out wide, doesn't he? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, Ian said again, yeah, well, honestly, happy to have Saar. Such an underrated player. He's a good player. He is a good player. Yeah, he's still, he's, still he's come player. through this season and he's, you know, he's cemented himself in that Spurs side. Um, and he said, this result was on Emery's folks. We all love him, but we're at home. Why play a five, a back five, poor tactics, facts. I'd like to know you guys. Um, Emery's played a five. How would you have liked to have seen a line up? Um, would you have liked to have seen a Morgan Rogers coming on the left, left and then just have the same same lining up as usual maybe power and Lenglet at the back or Kanza and power and cash right back yeah let us know how you would have liked how you thought Emery could have, Emery could have lined up for this one because obviously no Jacob Ramsey was available so was it a Morgan Rogers that would come in or was it a Tillemans maybe go to the left and Bailey go up top again and Diaby on the right uh Gary says I had a bad feeling about today was hoping we would get a draw at least but conceding four at home against them is embarrassing Gary also says Kanza was prime Engels today. Engels. <laughs> Engels. I think that's the most devastating Spurs goal I've seen, to be honest, uh, at Villa Park. And uh, Gary says, I think we played for a draw today and I drew again, so no excuses on Thursday. Weston says, uh, for me, Kanza takes too long to pass the ball and then when he does, makes a pass and relies on other players to get him out of the shit. There was one incident in the first half um, when we were playing it out from the back and we kind of delayed the pass and Fortunately, we played it off Madison. It went out for a goal kick, but their their press press was intense. And uh, we're not going to change the way we play. Emery's got one system, one system of playing, and how it works. We just have to get better at it and continually. And we've been outstanding at it for the majority of the season. So I can't see that changing. To be honest, it's just it's just how we play, and we'll get better and better. And teams will continue to press, and we'll continue to just get better at playing out that way. Uh, Gary says we are only pissed off because we are better than that. That's yeah, we didn't we didn't show our full capability today, I'm for sure, definitely. Weston Bailey looked tired to me. Uh Charlie said I did wonder myself whether we set up slightly more defensive to prevent against going man for man. But it's been a basketball match to conserve energy. Yeah, that it's it felt like that way. It felt like we didn't want to go gunshot for gunshot with Spurs. Um we wanted to conserve ourselves in that regard and yeah, I don't know, and we just didn't fancy us going going for that way. Uh, Andy says we are kidding ourselves if we think oh, it's at home is a gimme. This can go either way. Of course it can. It's football, of course, but uh, I'm sh- I feel like we will step up for that one. And John McGinn, I, f- I feel like John McGinn's going to put in some performance on Thursday uh, after today. Uh, Gary well, says cast- I know it's a break now, isn't it? So it's, uh, <laughs> exactly. I want to see, bro. You know how the Castor Ray shirts are looking in preseason. Yeah. If he don't leave the pitch looking like that, like he's in, um, like he's coming in America. Like I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to know about McGinn. He has to put in. He has to win the game for us, man. Because we'll get onto it, and it. But we'll get onto, but we'll get onto what he was doing before that, and and then the decision as well. Gary says yeah. Cash tries, he really does. But when he gets more advanced than Bailey, it neutralizes Leon, and Cash still can't cross a ball. Yeah, it, I didn't think Cash was too bad today. I, I, I didn't think he was too bad. Um, initially, it I felt like it was getting to him a bit, but I thought he was he was doing some decent stuff um, during the game. But yeah, uh, go on, bro. Sorry, bro. Yeah, sorry for interrupting you. But they got into his head. They got into his head. Do you remember that one point where he got in behind and he's caught inside and he's tried to shoot? Cash against any other team plays that across for Watkins for a tapping. And he's tried to come inside. The Spurs fans are in his head from when he was over with the throwing and all that um, context behind the game. And I just thought that kind of threw him off a little bit. As well. I don't know, bro, because um, he played a ni- he played a nice little ball to Leon Bailey when he, he played it through on the side, and Bailey put it across. Like I didn't think I didn't think he had. I think initially no, I thought he did because he touches, but specific, then just that specific moment. No, like Cash never shoots there. Cash never tries to. He knows his role normally. He knows he knows his position in the team, and he'll 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 play the ball. But cutting in and shooting, like I just thought to myself, oh, yeah, the 
they've, they've got to you a little bit there. No, I disagree. I disagree. I thought he was playing up to it, to be honest. I did think that initially, but I thought he, got, he really grew into that first half for sure. I, I, I disagree with that. But yeah, um, go on then, bro. Before the red, McGinn's influence. Did you? He was the only one, it seemed, that was trying to get us back into the game, didn't he? Um, uh, he had that moment he when it. he was on the ball. Yeah, go on. Yeah, we made a triple substitution as soon as their second goal went in. And I think before we went on a bit of a tangent, I think that's what I was uh, saying about Emery. He's, one criticism is he's too reactive instead of proactive. Like those subs never come if we're, if, it, if, if it's still nil-nil, I don't think. We don't make the triples change. Uh, we're two nil down and then the subs come on like straight after. It's like, ugh, do you know, it's, it's, like, it's a bit late for that, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, Moreno comes on for Luca Dean. Musa Diaby came on for Tillemans and Zaniola came on for Clement Lengue. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, triple change from Unai, but we were 2 0 down. Yeah, um, John McGinn, then he he looked like he was trying to do everything to get us back into that game. And he, you know, he had a, it was that time just before the incident and the red card where he, he, he went through like three or four players and ended up getting us up the pitch and got a corner from it. I think, if my memory serves me right, I might have gone for a goal kick. But he looked like the only one who was really trying to push us and progress us up the pitch and try, us get, try and get us back into the game at that point in, in the game. And then, yeah, it's just a moment of madness. And it, um, is it a red for you? Uh, it's cynical, of course, it's cynical. Um, definitely cynical. He, ha- he hasn't really tried to play the ball, but on any day, that can be yellow, rest given a red. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on the red card and just, just how how that just changed the whole complexion of the game as well. Yeah, building up to that, sometimes I get a bit too, like, um, into the stats and, like, the tactics of it. But one Mm. thing footballers and managers always talk about is character. How Mm. does your team react when you're losing and when when shit's not going right? And I'll be real, McGinn was the only player on that pitch showing character in that moment. Mm. He was the only one running around. He was the only one carrying the ball. Douglas, I love Douglas, but he wasn't leading. Douglas wasn't mm-hmm. leading on the pitch in that second half when shit got real. Um, no one else really was. So I credit McGinn for that. I credit for McGinn for that. He was actually the only one that was playing football for Villa. He was, yeah, he was, yeah. However, yeah. when you're in the Premier League, you're at the elite level, you have to be smarter, man. You have to be smarter. I don't mind the idea of putting a tackle in. But if you're going to do it, you have to show intent to win the ball. If the ball's over there and you're just going into hitting, while I, do, I might not say it's it's a red card, like I might not, like it feels a tiny, tiny bit soft, just like the, the challenge itself. You can the see idea of going in, in. Yeah, bro, the idea of going in and, and just taking a player out, nowhere near the ball, mm. bro, you can't really complain, man. At I that speed as well, at the speed as yeah. well. And at, yeah. in the position right in front of their in bench. In front of the bench, well. like, yeah, it was... Like in terms of where McGinn. placement of the tackle and and the speed and like okay and the cynicality of it like yeah it's tough, it's tough to argue man. because because I, I could say i think it's a yellow i do think it's yellow but i can see why a red's been given because because yeah. of all of them factors and obviously it's caused the kerfuffle and everything like that it's all gone it's all gone a bit over the top <laughs> i ain't heard that word in time in kerfuffle, it's caused like. a madness man it's called all over all over the place, everyone was everywhere, players getting yeah. involved. And yeah, at the time I was shocked that he'd given a red card. Um to be honest, if you look at his cheering reaction, and bro, that but yeah, it, it, I, I watched I watched the highlights. I looked at his reaction, he gives a quick oh no, and then he turns to Martinez to give the armband. And he even Conser's called him and shouted, he's gone like that. Conser yeah, shouts him as he's walking off the pitch and he's gone like that. Think like use your brain, man. And he's just and turned around and walked off. So because if you remember the Brentford incident when Kamara gets sent off, McGinn's the one doing that to Kamara. Like, what are you doing? You've cost us. Remember the Kamara Brentford away? Yeah, where he, um, yeah, yeah. Was yeah, yeah. McGinn when he was the first player there, just like use your bro today. Yeah. He's cost us, man. And I gotta be honest, I don't rate clapping him off. I don't rate that. Like, we're better than that to be clapping off a guy that's got sent off for no reason. Like, I get he was showing desire and character. But you don't deserve to be clapped off. You've cost you've cost us long term. The worst yeah, thing that, that's the biggest like implication this. today. Facts. Facts. Yeah. Facts, bro. The worst thing is free game like this. If you're gonna lose 4-0, at least keep the consequences to the game alone. 
don't start getting red cards and just costing us in the future as well, because then you make the result even worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, that, that's the biggest thing from today. Is McGinn suspended for three games now? In when we already don't have a Bubakar Kamara, yeah, and now no John McGinn for three games. It's, it's, it's either you drop Yuri Tillemans in there, or it's Timo Brunham coming in and playing three games now, and you're really relying on the youngster to step up. Um, for three humongous games against West Ham Wolves and Manchester City, so it's just stupid. It's just stupid from McGinn, in all honesty. It's, it's, it's so stupid, it's on, just, just like some, it's champions, championship type stuff. It's a stupid thing to do, man. Uh, but yeah, we'll get into uh, Kim says, Well, we appeal the red card, got nothing to lose. I think we'll, we probably will try and appeal it, but I think because another game. they are as well. Um, you get another game. That's what to lose. You get another game suspension. Is that a fact? Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you appeal and lose, don't you get? Doesn't it turn into four games? Uh, if that's a fact. Then yeah, I can't. I don't know if they will appeal it. Then but, yeah, that's fair. Uh, Weston says it's 21 with cash because I don't think he's a bad player. But at the t- same time, we really do need an upgrade on him. Yeah, I think that position will get upgraded. To be honest, we, I mean we signed. Um, the guy from Red Star, Belgrade, obviously really young as well, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, I didn't want to pronounce his name, Costa. <laughs> Just the guy. Nadalcevic. Yeah, Nadalcevic. Uh, Gary says, "Look, be Ajax, West Ham are under pressure, then the international break can hopefully get ready for the last push." That's, I think that's the international break could come at the perfect time for us, to be honest, to regroup and recollect. Uh, hopefully we can just pull through the next two games for sure. Charlie says, uh, thanks for joining. Charlie he says, I can't believe our captain makes that decision utter, utter head loss. You have to show more responsibility than to let your personal frustration cost us, not just in the game, but the next three. Yeah, I, I, I echo that for sure. You can't uh, you can't really says, argue with that really, can you? Being mm-hmm. honest. Weston says that's exactly when Arsenal fans said what Arsenal fans said about Emery waits until it's too late to make a change. Uh, Gary says, didn't make a difference, to be honest. We weren't coming back from two down. Yeah, it's, it's going forward. As, it's the going forward thing for me, the three games. But well, you could feel the momentum, though. They were, mm-hmm. they were building a little bit before mm-hmm. that. I know we've made the argument that no one was playing, but there was that possibility, like 11 v 11. You just you get one from a set piece or something. You, you never know, innit? But... Yeah, yeah. Joe says he speaks from 10 to 15 yards away to take him out with the force man. It's pure stupidity and the rest should be punishing those with red cup more. If it is, if it if it isn't dangerous, it's reckless. It was reckless for sure. It was reckless. Weston says kafuffle, great word. <laughs> Charlie says treating him like some martyr that annoyed me so badly. <laughs> Gary says John was captain and should have known better. He was our best player and was just frustrated. We'll miss him now. How do we line up in midfield against West Ham now? That's that's a question for Unai. I can see uh, Tim Tim starting from now. What uh, did you Shikiri think of Jay? Uh, Under the circumstances, he thought he played okay until, I mean, they scored the next two, what, the 90th, 90 plus 1, 90 plus 10 when yeah, He came on like the 70th. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think he did okay. He was just, we we're all, we we're still trying to go for goals and, out of his shape, 10 men playing against the Spurs side who, who are killer on the counter uh, with another 10 minutes added on. So I don't think I don't think he did too bad when he did come on the pitch, yeah. to be honest. Let's go through his stats quickly. Uh, 21 minutes, 8 touches, 4 passes, 100% passing accuracy, 100% dribbles completed, 2 out of 3 ground jewels won. Promising? Promising for, for what? For, well, for the West Ham game that he'll coming to now, won't it? He'll probably he'll probably be dropped for Ajax then, won't he? Yeah, dropped. Well, consider it not dropped, sorry. In terms of he started against Ajax in the last game, he probably won't play then, Tim. No, he won't. He'll, I think he'll save him for, for the Premier. Save him for West Ham, won't he? Yeah, yeah. Same sure. McGinn and Louise. Weston says, we're not without Kamara now, McGinn in the middle of three games. That's a massive worry. That, that's the biggest thing from the McGinn red card today for me. Yeah, if the appeal is frivolous, I can add another game on. There you go. Uh, uh, Gary says, I mean, letting Mr. Offside Werner score as well was annoying. Facts. Facts. Gary says, I'd take that uh, Kaplan from Ajax. He had a good game. Yeah, and Hato did okay. the other day when we played against them. 
Uh, Dante, be sure to like and subscribe to the pod if you haven't already. Appreciate that, Dante. Uh, yeah, echo. And Gary says, it took Ramsey a season struggle to get to this stage, so Tim needs a lot of games, to be fair. Well, he's going to be bedded in now, so we'll see how he goes and how he coaches it. But it's, it's a tough ask for Tim, for sure. It is a really big ask. What? Uh, he, he'll be loving life, bro. He'll be buzzing. Tim will be buzzing now. He knows he's going to get a run of games in the team. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And he's going to he's going he's gonna he's gonna have a perfect platform to step up, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like play, players players want to play, man. They don't really... He'll be upset with the injuries, but he knows he's got he's got a chance now. And I guess as Villa fans, we're just gonna have to support him because we know we're gonna be relying of on him. And he's gonna he's gonna make mistakes. He's gonna make mistakes. He's, he hasn't played football. Um, I didn't think he was that good against Ajax, but I, he was all right today. I thought he was. He thought he was all right today. In so the circumstances as well. Yeah, facts. And Emery, Emery came out after the game as well, and he spoke about. He said, "You know, we've got Doggy and Yuri." He was quoted as saying, we've got Dougie and Yuri in this, similar in styles of play. Um, but we've also got Tim, and Tim differs from that. And he even referred to him as a, as like the defensive, was it the stopper or the blocker? He used one of those stopper, words. Stopper, yeah. Yeah, yeah the stopper, stopper to def- describe Tim and his attributes. So Emery sees Tim as that player to come in and step into that that role. So, that's, so that would make you think, that would make you think Tillemans will, will stay further forward. Yeah, then, stay further not. forward, yeah. Tillemans yeah. is another questionable guy. Getting a starting place, he's another one. He's he's starting place. Might be up for grabs soon, man. Uh, another Villa podcast joined. Go go follow this guy, uh, Gisharma. Good channel. He's just started up. Uh, he says Carlos is a CDM. Thoughts on that? Don't know. I don't. I don't think he's ever played there. Potential, potential Paul Torres CDM, or do you just put Tim in? No, I think Tim. Tim. Tim's the guy. What what what's an interesting question is though, what youth player comes to the bench? Wonder what youth player. Um, We're gonna have to add someone to the bench from the academy, unless Amari Kellerman comes in, but you'd think it would be like a midfielder that would get that. Mm, mm, get a get a bench. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Uh so after the McGinn yeah, sending down off. down to the bare bones, and I just need to, we're down to the yeah, bare like, bones. Yeah, like, you're asking me questions that I ain't even thought of, like, I ain't even Bro, thinking about, like. Actually, <laughs> this, this season's been a you're struggle. asking me stuff like, that I'm not even thinking about. But, bro, it's been a struggle. It's been a struggle. When you think about the players we're having to go through now, <laughs> I, guess this one's, I guess this one's our own fault, but. It's a grind, bro. It's a grind. It is a grind for sure. Uh, Gary says Emery didn't say good evening as usual post match, so he must have been miffed. He, I've seen videos and images of him on the bench, especially for the second goal. He was just he was in disbelief, obviously, from giving the ball away. Gary's gone for Kellerman. Uh, Charlie said that uh, Aidan Borland was in training with the first first team last week. Who wants a midfielder? Uh, FNL's joined, gone, come on, you Spurs. And he's also gone, haha, you mugs. Oh, just enjoy the victory, man. It's a long season still. Uh, Charlie's gone for, he says, uh, it'll be him or Todd Olcock, both performing well for the 21s currently. Uh, and Gary's gone, why Zani, one Zaniolo again? He clearly not interested in Duran. Nah, nah, Zani, no, no, bro. Zani, no. <laughs> so, yeah, bro. Uh, the 2 0, down to 10. Our approach didn't really change. We still were going for it, weren't we, when we were playing? And we did get into good, some good spaces even at 2-0. I mean, we were getting the ball out to Mr. Diaby at times and getting him into good areas. And we got a few corners from that. We were putting the ball across as well um, into good spa- areas. Uh, Zaniola nearly got across one, which Vicario did well for. Uh, so, yeah, it, was that, at 2-0, that was, we were was, still going for it. That was a like half next year, I think, that chance as well. Mm-mm. So we were still trying to get into those areas and going for it, but ultimately, with the amount of space left open and you know the devastating plays that Spurs do have in attack, they ended up getting the third goal. Um, Kulisevsky gets it on the right side and puts in a nice ball across for Hyunmin Son to put into the roof of the net, who's got a fantastic record at Villa Park, and it continues. It continues at Villa Park. Uh, yeah, he's, the, he's the man. I think Villa he's Park, got. Man. I think he's got a goal every fifty-eight minutes he's played at Villa. So yeah, Son Son loves it at Villa for, for sure. And then final goal again, just at sixes or sevens really. Uh, Son's done well to, 
to dra- drag the ball and take it into the area. He found uh, Timo Werner with a pass, and Werner, it's a, it's a really good finish. He slotted it into the far corner and made it 4 0. And uh, yeah, just a disappointing just a disappointing afternoon all around, isn't it? And you just hope um, we write that one off and we just go again and we take all of that in now into Ajax on Thursday, which is massive, and then into West Ham away on Saturday. But yeah, you, you're closing thoughts, bro, and anything else you want to add? Right, do you want to address that Diaby comment? Because obviously we haven't really spoke about, about Diaby. And his yeah, Shakiri said Diaby is one dead player. Forget being off form. He literally cannot control the ball and runs out of play every time. Yeah, it's getting a bit concerning for me. The thing I'll give DRB credit for is his off the ball runs. They're actually decent. Like he was getting in behind them quite a lot in that second half when he did come on. But when he gets the ball, you almost like, I'm at the point now where I'm almost like feeling a little bit sorry for him because by his body mm. language, you can, you can tell he knows this ain't good enough. You can tell he knows his first touch isn't there. He can't even he can't even beat a man and get past his man. I don't know. I'm worrying. Yeah, worrying a little he, bit about him. Do you just do you just write this season off for him? But you have fifty million pounds signing. Like you, we're not really in a position to. We need more. We need more, man. Really, we need we need this. When, if you, if we put you in those positions to score, or like put you one v one with our player entering the box, we need you. We need you to step up, man. Because we're getting yeah, far better yeah. from this it's it's fact it's you know it's a big signing and he was he was very poor today even when he came on and he was getting into so many space cash put him over i think um doggy played a great ball into him as well over the top and just didn't get anywhere with it and he really struggled and it might be one of those where you just give him another season and just see we just wait for him and give him the time because obviously he's going to get the time and the same happened with other players as well he just might need time to bed in and get his because his confidence seems on the floor now even though he's had moments where, he, obviously, Luton, just, just last week, he's come on and got an assist with a great cross. Uh, yeah, it's all going off in the comments. It's quite funny. Uh, Gary said, uh, Ajax is now our biggest game of the season and our record in big games has been poor. Now, we've had some good results, Man City and Arsenal. That, it's not all over, Gary, just yet. Keep the faith, man. Keep the faith for sure. Uh, FNL's going in and he's going to six for you guys. Not a bad season. Kev's going back, Effie. Now remember you're still Spursy. It's all going off in the comments, bro. Uh, Gary says, been a big day for the Aussies. Angelo winning and Australia Shepherd just won Crofts. Big, big Crofts, man. And Weston said, Effie now isn't, isn't it bath night? <laughs> Got school tomorrow. All going off in the comments, man. All going off. Uh, yeah, any final thoughts, bro? Um, yeah. Come on, come on. I'm going to be sp- supporting two teams, man. Villa and whoever's playing Spurs from now on because we're going to need to be <laughs> on other teams, man. And they've got Fulham next, haven't they? I think. Rodrigo oh, Moniz, man. What do you what do you, what you got for me? <laughs> and Dama Troy or the break. What have you got? Dama William, what do you have for, in store for me, man? Come on. Yeah, it's all still to play for. There's 10 games. Obviously, Spurs got a game in hand now, so they do go above us to win that. But it's Stamford Bridge, a place where Spurs haven't got a great record at, at all. Um, so, still all to play for, man. It's still all to play for, indeed. Uh, I would say man of the match, but just, I don't think there is one after today. Do you? <laughs> no idea, bro. No idea. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't think there will be for sure. Um, but yeah, on to Ajax, bro. Massive game again. A massive game again. Well, I'm saying John McGinn. I'm, I'm expecting no more how comments. John is, game, I don't know how John McGinn is. So, yeah. As, McGinn, as no Deontay says, me. skip the Ajax review. Maybe that will help with team morale. Or... <laughs> we'll no more inter- it off. McGinn, louder interviews, man. Like, come on. Yeah, McGinn, McGinn just head in. And, and, and give it your all, man. Give it your all, which I'm sure you will do, for sure. Um, we'll get into that Ajax game, for sure, at some point this week. But, yeah, thanks all for joining. Again, if you could like, uh, subscribe if you're new around here. And also, comment comment on your thoughts on the game and what we've talked about and what other thoughts you, you have uh, regarding the game. Uh, Gary just said here, no, let's be gracious, Adam. We can still do this fourth thing. Same. 
Let's yeah, just concentrate man. on our own, man. Let's concentrate on ourselves. I hear it. I hear it, Gary. A lot um, of positivity. You, as got, well. you got you got a hate watch as well, man. Trust me. Trust me, Gary. You got a hate watch as well. You'll enjoy that as well. Nothing better. Yeah. But yeah, I think we've been the fourth best team this season. So it's just injuries, isn't it? And suspensions nice, that are holding us back. But... Nice, nice for sure. Anyway, bro, thanks for joining all here in the comments. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure doing this one because... I needed to do it to just get my thoughts across, and I know you did as well, bro. Um, well, bro it's feel better fun. after talking, and, and exactly very feel cool. great for Thank talking you. about it and hearing your guys' thoughts as well. Um, more than welcome, as always. And yeah, comment your thoughts as well after the video if you have any. I, I love to respond to the, your comments and see what you guys are thinking as well. But yeah, uh, <laughs> said uh, fair play, lads. I don't give in tonight and miss after that display. We're always here, come rain or shine, Gary. Don't you worry. And uh, Weston's gone up the villa as well. Yeah, up the villa, and uh, we'll have a preview for the IX game, but up the villa. <laughs>